All right, sir, thanks very much for uh, uh, having us on the ship. Can you uh, talk to us uh, a little bit about what you've accomplished on this deployment? Um, what are the lessons that you've learned that are going to go into development uh, of uh, the carrier capability as you guys work toward first deployment? Um, well, it's been a fantastic deployment uh, for Queen Elizabeth. And I should probably start by saying that the ship is one month shy of being two years old. Uh, and this is our second uh, deployment to the eastern seaboard. Uh, as many of you know, we were here last year. And if I characterise last year's deployment as being very much procedural, uh, did the fifth generation aircraft carrier, does it operate well with the fifth generation aircraft, the F-35? The answer was yes. This year, it's about taking those procedures forward uh, and everything that we've done has been with uh, operations at the front of our mind. So how will we fight that aircraft? Not just from the ship, but as part of the strike group itself. So everything that we've been doing has been more complex and the tempo of activity has increased and there's been much, much more concurrent activity as we really just try to stress ourselves from the youngest sailor all the way through to the commanding officer. Sir, what's on your wish list? Good weather to get home. <laughs> um, no, I wish we, we, we've done fantastically well. The programme's gone uh, this autumn has been, uh, has been brilliant. Um, we would not have achieved as much as we've achieved without the unwavering and unflinching support of the United States, uh, particularly the US Navy and Marine Corps. Uh, their interoperability with us uh, from aircraft, ships, submarines has been absolutely in, uh, fantastic. And actually what we're trying to do is get beyond being simply interoperable. There's lots of nations that can do that. What we want to be here is absolutely integrated. And so that almost it doesn't matter what flag you're flying, the US ship or aircraft can dock into our strike group uh, seamlessly as though it was a British ship. And we've made some huge strides this autumn in achieving that. A long way to go, but that's where we're trying to get to uh, with UK carrier strike. Have you heard from some of your US partners in the Navy saying twin islands? This seems like the way to go. Uh, it's, it's different from the US Navy, but having seen it work, they can see, uh, they can see the benefits to it. Um, you know, it certainly works for us. It offers us much more flexibility. Uh, as you can see, when you, when you turn around behind you with our lifts that are offset from the main runway, um, it forces us to, be, to adhere to formal practice and procedures between the navigation bridge and the aviation bridge. Uh, so for us, it's working really well. Crew is sort of, it could be considered a benefit as well. So one of the um, core designs of, of the Queen Elizabeth class is, and we would call it a fifth generation aircraft carrier. So from the keel upwards in its DNA, it's all about the relationship with the F-35. Uh, and so in, in so doing that, we've embraced technology, innovative solutions, management systems that allow us uh, to, re to reduce our manpower burden. So whether it's our highly mechanized weapon handling system or just the management of information on board, particularly in engineering, uh, cameras, remote observation, uh, we've been able to get at it and keep our manpower cap really quite low. Um, is, but some of these estimates were um, design estimates, for example. Is the ship proving to be as manpower efficient now that she's been in service? I mean, do you feel that there are any billets or rates you have to increase? Uh, and how is she on material reliability given the electric engines, for example, in Type 45 continue to be a little bit of a challenge? Um, so with regards to the manpower, yes, the, the number that we're running around with now is broadly where we started out. And again, that's what's been tested this autumn in, in, in as much in a combat scenario. Is the manpower sustainable? And the answer at the moment is yes, uh, which is fantastic for us. All of those areas where we were hoping that uh, innovative technical solutions would reduce the manpower are proving to be well-founded uh, you know, across the board. Um, and from a propulsion, then yes. Um, clearly, uh, we learned lots of lessons from Type 45. And the integrated electrical propulsion that we operate here on Queen Elizabeth is, is proving to be a real success story. And, and to fight the ship as well, because one of the reasons you need bodies, as you guys found in the Falklands and everybody else has, that you need a lot of bodies. Do you think that you have enough in the event that the ship does go to combat? Very much so. You fight the ship from that flight deck. That aircraft is what fights this ship. And uh, we've got systems and, and personnel and the training and the experience. That's what we're building to do, is to fight the ship as a strike group uh, from the deck with that aircraft. Okay, does anybody want to take an individual photograph of the captain? Well, did anybody else have any questions that you 
you guys yeah. want to ask them. On U.S. Navy carriers, the air wing is subordinate to the flag rather than to the ship's CO. Yeah. Yeah, is that the same case in, in your ship, or is the air wing subordinate? No, it's exactly the same um, uh, setup on here. So uh, the strike group commander has the air wing uh, working to him. And so his stra staff structure uh, is exactly the same as you would recognize on a, on a US carrier group. Yeah, so I would very much class them um, as not as trials. I mean, this is really quite complex activity. Trials were what we were doing last year of, you know, does the ship stop, start, go port and starboard when you want it to? This is now being about um, fighting aircraft um, and the ships that have been with us. So on any given day, as an example, we'd be launching jets off this deck uh, with ordnance on board, who would be going ashore to United States ranges to drop that ordinance at a time and place of our choosing to prove that we, we've got that end-to-end -end capability. Concurrently, we'd have helicopters flying 150, 200 miles in the opposite direction to exercise in anti-submarine warfare with US submarines and US DDGs and cruisers. At the same time as my Royal Marine Commando helicopters uh, would be flying off in a different direction to do their own training. That's not testing and trialing, that's really putting the ship through its paces, getting at the manpower piece that we talked about, proving those systems, and building our understanding of how we will actually fight. And that's what this autumn's been about. Um, and so far, everything has gone absolutely you know, fantastic. Um, you know, everything we wanted to achieve, we have achieved. So it's, uh, it's been a really successful period that's culminated now at the opposite end of the spectrum. And I think this shows the flexibility and agility of, a, of an aircraft carrier is that we're here at anchor off Annapolis. If we've been exercising the hard end of what we can do, today is all about the softer end of just showing uh, how we can support uh, you know, our political masters uh, at, the, at the softer end uh, in, in, the, in things that they would want to do, engaging with senior US uh, uh, politicians, uh, defense industry, etc. So it just shows that spectrum that in a space of one week, uh, you know, we can switch focus completely. Do, do you feel um, a shift toward the, the great power footing um, that all major navies are shifting to now, the U.S. Navy uh, and the Royal Navy as well? Do you feel that in sort of the pace and the nature of the training and, uh, that you guys are now conducting? Well, I, th I think with, with, with an aircraft carrier such as this, what's absolutely key is that we can work together seamlessly. And this is getting at the integration piece, is that the tempo at which operations will take place around the world and the variety of threats that we face, we've got to be absolutely integrated. Uh, and therefore the training has got to reflect that. So it has to be at a tempo and a level of complexity that resembles those sorts of threats that we believe we'll face out there. Uh, and this autumn is, you know, is, is a great example of that. And it will continue to build next year for Queen Elizabeth. So our pro, when we get back to the UK, We'll continue to develop this and we will follow a generation cycle of building uh, capability in the strike group, very much as you would expect a US carrier group to do uh, ahead of our inaugural deployment in 2021. We've got to end it there. I'm sorry, the captain needs to go and we need to get down to the end. Thank you. 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 Thank you.